One of the most important technical skills that we need as pianists is the ability to voice chords. Now, the first thing that needs to be explained in, in the context of chord voicing is that this term voicing actually has three completely different meanings at the piano. So unfortunately, it is confusing. But so, so just very quickly, I won't dedicate the whole lesson to these three meanings. But one is if you're a piano technician, then when you voice the hammers, you actually take some device that looks like this. And this is a special contraption that has three needles. And what they will do is they'll pull out the action and then they'll take the hammers and then they prick the felts of the hammers in a special way. And then that softens the hammers. And then so, so that way the hammers could be softer. And as a result, the sound is a little bit softer, a little bit, maybe a little bit more mellow. And then there's also a special lacquer that could be applied in order to make the hammers harder. And that should be used with, with even greater caution because you can't really undo that. And then they'll do other techniques such as filing the hammers. So th there are different techniques and all that belongs to voicing the hammer. So that's what your piano technician does. And let me put this down before I end up uh, hurting myself or sitting on it or something. Now, as for voicing chords, the, even there, unfortunately, there are two different meanings to this. So if you talk to a jazz pianist, then when they say chord voicing, they actually mean what in classical music we call open position versus close position. But then they actually mean not just that, but, but they go into more detail. And they call these chord voicing. So for example, if we were to take the chord, let, let's just take something really simple. Let's take a C major triad, which you know very well. So here it is, C, E, G, right? This is what we call close position because all of the notes are as close together as possible. But then in classical music, we call this open position because the notes are not as close together as possible. And then anything else, let's say even this, that would also be an open position. But in jazz, th those will be called three totally different chord voicings. So that's that second definition. I, d I don't want to go into any extra detail because this lesson really is dedicated to this third meaning of voicing a chord. And that is how do we emphasize individual notes while playing the other notes at a softer level and really controlling all the dynamics within one hand in particular. That's hard and that's a technical issue. So let me demonstrate and I'll, I'll just show you, here's one example of a beautiful Beethoven, very lyrical Beethoven sonata that I'm working on. This is the penultimate sonata, opus 110, and it opens like this. And you have to really voice this just right. And it takes an, an unbelievable amount of work. And I, I think that was actually pretty decent this time. But it takes an unbelievable amount of work. Just uh, like I'm sitting there, I swear, for it must be hours. And I, I must have spent hours of my life just trying to get this first chord. And then I would say, no, that's not right. That, that it wasn't all together. And then, OK, that was good. But maybe this melody note was a little too loud. And so, so it takes so much work. And for something like this, basically, you have four voices, one, two, three, four. So you have soprano, alto, tenor, bass, and a typical SATB texture, kind of like a, a string quartet or a choir. And the most important voice is the soprano, because this is where the melody is. The second most important voice is the bass. And then you have Th then this would be the third th most important voice, the alto. And then the least important voice would be the tenor in this particular case. Because if the tenor sticks out, then it th oh, that doesn't sound all that musical. If, you, if, if your thumb here is, is too loud, it, it, that, that, that doesn't work. Th then it just doesn't sound very musical, doesn't sound very lyrical. So you really lose this, this magic uh, in the sound. So this is the least important voice in this particular case. That there, uh, every uh, musical context is, is different. So we're just looking at this uh, particular case. So what we want then is to voice them in order of importance. So this is the loudest, this is the second loudest, this is the third loudest, and this is the softest. And we have to do that all at the same time with just the right dynamic balance. 
and that's pretty good. So the question then is, how do we actually achieve this? And I'm going to give you several different techniques for voicing a chord plus an exercise. I think this will really help you then develop control over the voicings. Now, the first technique is simply to tilt the hand in the direction of whatever you want to emphasize. So this works in particular if you want to voice towards the outside of the hand. Now, this depends very much on the hand because, as you know, the thumb is naturally very strong. The fingers two and three are also naturally very strong, and then four or five are weaker. So we have a disadvantage at the piano in that m now most people do tend to be right-handed, yet the melody is often in the in the, it's often the highest voice it's in the soprano and we often have to play those notes with the weaker fingers in the right hand and that's harder and sometimes what happens is because those fingers are weak we don't we don't give enough sound it, it sounds out of balance so we have to compensate for that so one way to compensate then is just to tilt the hand a little bit in the direction uh, that, like towards what we want to emphasize. So instead of this, if I were to have the hand like this, now it's a relatively subtle difference, but if I were to have the hand more like this where the knuckles are quite level, and I play that, then notice how we really hear this alto voice, this A flat, but if I just tilt the hand outward this way a little bit, all of a sudden, now it's actually pretty easy to voice that C and then that A flat becomes softer just automatically. So that's technique number one is simply tilt the hand. And now uh, technique number two is whatever we want to emphasize, that finger, the finger that plays that particular note to be emphasized, just make that firmer than the other ones. Now, one thing that you can do, I'll, I'll actually teach this in, in a separate course on technique, the, the, you make sure that any other fingers are like really absolutely just soft, very, 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 very supple, right? And then we're going to actually really sh shape the fingers. So in this case, it's the fifth finger, and we want that to be louder. So I'm making that stronger. And we can see, like, the, so the other fingers, like the, the, this finger, if you were to actually like feel the muscles in my hand, then this finger is nice and firm. Now, it doesn't mean that I have tons of extra tension. I'm not like, <laughs> right, like tightening all the muscles in my body or whatever uh, by, by any means. It's just I make that particular finger nice and firm, and then the other ones are, are, are more relaxed, you know, not completely because they have to be shaped as well. But so there's more tension, very controlled, deliberate tension here in the finger that we want to emphasize. And then that's it. And then that will naturally emphasize that particular finger. So that's technique number two. Then technique number three is pretty interesting. And that is whenever we, we want to play something. Now, maybe I picked not the best example. Let me, let's, let's work on the left hand here because th this, this works very well for this technique. We're playing, the left hand mm. plays two black keys. And when you play only black keys or you play only white keys, then the keys are level. So, so everything is level and then we would want the fingers to be absolutely level on a plane. But by the way, this is the reason why we curve the fingers when we play the piano because if we were to play like this, then we would notice that all of the fingers have a different length. So we, we can't actually play all different keys at the same time. It's only once we do this that all of the fingers can lie on one surface. And we, we take advantage of that fact. We use that principle then in piano playing. And we want to make sure that if we want to play the notes equally and evenly, then, then we Imagine this surface, and we don't have to imagine because we actually have this surface, and we put the, the fingers, when we, when we approach the key and press them, then the fingers are, are absolutely level, and when we do that, then we get this very balanced sound where the notes are equal. But in this case, we don't want that. We want the thumb to be really, really light, and we want to emphasize that lower A flat a little bit. So the way to do that is, actually deliberately instead of this where it's where it's totally even 
deliberately we actually are going to lower this finger that we want to emphasize even though the keys are on one plane so we do that intentionally so the shape is not perfectly balanced but it's very controlled and then mm. that allows us to focus that extra em energy and uh, hence to emphasize then this lower note and you can exaggerate actually by and one exercise I can give you I'm going to give you a bonus exercise uh, one exercise is to try to play one note forte and another note pianissimo and really exaggerate that and that's a way to do that. So I'm, I'm actually taking advantage of several different techniques at once. I'm using all three of them. I'm tilting the hand slightly. I'm lowering this note. And I have that, that extra control tension on this finger. And I'm leaving this, this nice and light. So I'm using all three techniques, in that case, all at once in order to achieve that voicing. And you might not need to do quite so much. Because when I actually play this for real, it's, all, it's very soft. But I don't want, I don't want that. You hear how you don't really hear too much of the the bass. You hear more of this. Instead, we want more like that sound where there's more of that bass note, that A flat, and then the right hand, the melody here, and the, the C sings. And then I'd say, no, nah, it's a little too loud. That's pretty good, but it's very hard. It, you really have to get a feel for the for the exact keyboard that you're playing. So it. It's definitely uh, quite a challenge. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. And it takes a lot of work. It's one of, it really is one of the most important techniques to master in piano playing. And this, you could spend a lifetime just really working on this and refining it and, and getting everything just right and being able to do it consistently and then learning how to do it not just on your piano, but on other pianos as, as well. There's, there's a lot, lot there. So th this, is, this is a starting point. So, so that said i'm going to give you now an exercise that i think is a lot of fun it's an exercise that i came up with and i live in vienna and uh, here every new year's we play the blue danube waltz and the viennese are all like seemingly professional dancers and they all know how to do this the exercise i came up with is to play the blue danube waltz w just by playing one chord so if you let's let's say let's take d major for example this is just a d major chord n nothing nothing to it but if you voice the fingers individually, you can actually learn to play the melody while just repeating this chord. And notice all I'm doing is just I'm, I'm repeating this one chord, but I'm emphasizing a different finger. And you can use this as an exercise. It's just a fun little exercise that I came up with, and it works really well. And then you can notice then you can really hear if you're emphasizing the an individual finger, an, an individual note, or if, if they all sound pretty equal. And you could also learn to listen to when you play, when you press the, the keys down. Are they playing? Are, are you able to... Are you able to play them all together and still emphasize the individual notes? So those are the, the, my best tips on how to learn how to voice chords at the piano. So good luck. Enjoy. Happy practicing. And it's going to take a lot of practice, but I think it's very rewarding practice. So have fun with this.